Well, Robbie's back. He's in court again. Here's a hearing where he asks all his magical questions. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. All right. Uh, we'll go back to the cases that we missed. Are we ready to deal with uh, State versus Estabrook? I believe so, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. And for the record, Your Honor, Jenna Plank, representing the state, spelled J-E-N-N-A-P-L-A-N-K. Seated beside me is Mr. Estabrook. Um, if you would please speak with me. My name is Robbie. Uh, Mr. Estabrook, as my understanding, is here pro se. Uh, Your Honor, the, date, the state has dates that work. Um, I've attempted to have some discussion with Mr. Estabrook. I believe that these dates don't necessarily not work for him. Right. Um, the trial dates that the state would like would be call Thursday 8-18 for trial, Monday 8-22, if that date is particularly overly large. Uh, the secondary request would be call 8-22 for trial 8-23. Well, we should we should be able to do it on the 22. Um, I I object to a trial at this time because I still intend to plead guilty, like <coughs> I have been attempting to do the whole time. Uh, for some reason, uh, I have been prevented from entering a plea. I have not yet been arraigned, and um, I don't know why this has been drawn out as long as it has. I believe that your record will indicate that I have been arraigned, but I have not ever at any point entered a knowing involuntary plea. I'm just wondering if I have the right to uh, enter an informed plea. Well, we show an arraignment on um, March 1, 2016. As I said, uh, that is incorrect on that date. Um, do your records indicate that I made a knowing involuntary plea? <laughs> do I have the right to plead guilty today? Just a moment. Of course, you can, but um, we're going to have we're going to have to do some paperwork, and it might be. I just wanted to clear up the initial question whether you've been arraigned, and it shows that you were arraigned on three one two thousand sixteen before Judge Todd. <coughs> Does it show how the arraignment happened? In, um, let's see. <clears throat> Looks like Justice Center and you signed it, it says under duress and threat of violence, but nevertheless, it, you acknowledged it. And, um, the case order to not have contact with victims, and, um, order to appear on the 16th, uh, <coughs> East County Courthouse. I've made it um, pretty clear on the record that all I've been trying to do is plead guilty. I'm simply attempting to make an informed decision. We'll, we'll, um, if you've done the paperwork, we can take a look at it here. Otherwise, I'll just set it over to CPC for a plea. Do I have the right to make an informed plea today? We have, see these pleas on the board? All of those have all the paperwork already done for them. I have those, I should take those. If you haven't, we can give you the forms and uh, you can go through them. Uh, if you get them done before we have to move on, that's fine. Otherwise, I'll just send you to the CPC court, which is up in, in uh, 
Um, I, I really uh, do not wish to have to continue coming here. Each time I come here, I'm threatened um, and told that if I don't show up, then you can. I, I would imagine that they can take the plea today if you can get the paperwork filled out. What I'm saying is that there, there's paperwork. We'll give you the forms. You can just settle down and work on them. If we can take them here after you've gone through all of that, and I can take the plea, I'll take the plea. Otherwise, we'll send you upstairs. Am I entitled to uh, uh, resp responses to clarifications that I have regarding the cause and nature of these proceedings? I've told you what the proceeding is. You have been arraigned. Um, Objection. I have not been arraigned at this point. And no, our, our records show that you have. All that arraignment is is that you get an order when you next appear and you, you, get, you get given the uh, accusatory instrument, which it reflects that you did. So that's the arraignment. Has the prosecutor submitted evidence establishing jurisdiction? There is no... That's not the part of the proceedings. That's not arraignment. Well, arraignment is not an evidentiary. Uh, objection, point of clarification. I'm not asking about evidence for the hearing. I'm asking if the prosecutor has met her burden of proof and established jurisdiction so that we can proceed with the matter. I'm wondering why it is that you have the right to adjudicate this matter and why I do not and if, whether or not you're assuming jurisdiction in this matter. I have jurisdiction. I have taken an oath of office. I have been installed as a judge of the court of a, a, a court of general jurisdiction in this jurisdiction. I have jurisdiction over criminal matters. I assure you that that has been done. It does not have to be reestablished for each proceedings. And um, I think I've handled the issues here. I'll give you the paperwork for a plea. I'll ask you to step aside so we can continue with the proceedings. Point of clarification, are you saying that the... Could you give him the paperwork? Are, are you saying that the rules are applicable to me and that they're, the prosecutor has given evidence establishing that these rules are applicable to me that you're charging me with? All rules are applicable to you that are applicable to other people in this courtroom. You're not special. I don't have to establish the whole range of the laws of the state of Oregon, the laws of this country, the Constitution of the state of Oregon, Constitution of the United States. I don't have to do that for you individually. It has appeared in the in the court file that you have been arraigned, and um, we're just going to proceed that way. Objection, point of clarification. I understand that you've objected. I don't need to continue this dialogue. Is, is that an opinion that you're relying on? Step aside. Is that an opinion, or are you relying on facts and evidence? I am telling you that we have concluded your portion here. So you're saying the prosecutor has submitted evidence establishing jurisdiction? I am telling you that the prosecutor does not have to submit any evidence where we know who the prosecutor is, and it is not going to be a special proceedings or special process for you alone. Now, you have been arraigned. Objection. You say you I've want to plead. I've given you the paperwork. You haven't filled it out yet. I'm going to ask you to step aside so that we can continue with this proceedings. Actually, I'm going to order you to step aside now. Madam, may I use your jury room? That'd be all right. Pardon? May I use your jury room? You bet. Thank you, Robin. Okay. Well, I feel like I'm being threatened, so I will go. I, yeah, I mean, we're going to play around with it. It's just be, um, let's see. All right, we'll start with the first on the board. My name is John Schlossner. I'm a, I'm a defense attorney. Mm -hmm. If you'd like, I can ask the judge if she'd appoint me as legal, uh, not not your attorney, but as a legal advisor. If you have some questions like you had out there, if you'd like some things answered, 
I don't believe that you're able to answer. I'm tr attempting to be informed of the cause and nature of the proceedings so that I can be arraigned. And she's trying to indicate that I have been arraigned and I have not been arraigned. Right, that's what I mean if you want. If you'd like me to try and help answer some questions, I'm happy to do it. If you, if you don't, that's fine. I just thought I'd offer it. Well, I'm, I'm okay <clears throat> talking to you right now. I mean, if you really feel like you have the answer, but... So you were asking about whether or not the district attorney has provided proof to establish probable cause, is that what you were no, arguing with jurisdiction? No, jurisdiction the So the information is the initial burden, the state files it, and then at that point there's no obligation on the state until you challenge that, and the way to do that is to go to trial. At trial they would have to meet all of those burdens. You're not obligated to take a plea before trial, and so by voluntarily entering a plea before actually going to trial and challenging the state's charges against you, you are um, uh, telling the court that you're accepting the charges and uh, admitting that there's sufficient facts to prove your guilt. Thereby, jurisdiction is just instantly established. But I have never, I have never entered a plea. I know, but I thought I heard you out there saying you just wanted to enter a plea and be done with it. I've been attempting to enter, so <clears throat> I've been attempting to enter a plea of guilty. Right. Yep. Contingent so, on the... It can't oh, be... No, uh, there, it, no, no, guilty plea on, can't be on, contingent. No. Let me finish sure. before you interrupt. Sure. I've been attempting to enter a guilty plea. However, before I do, it has to be informed, right? Is the court able to accept uninformed guilty pleas? Yes or no? Uh, it's a two-part question. <laughs> well, it's, it, no, it's, it's a, two, a simple it, question. No, it's Can not. The court it's a two-part question. So I'm, guilty I'm just telling you it's a two-part question, so I'm going to answer both parts of it. Okay. Yes, a court can accept um, what I'm thinking you mean by an uh, uninformed. Don't dick around with me. I mean, we're taught we're. I'm not dicking around with you. I'm telling you that you can be informed by looking at the police reports uh, that the state has to provide you the discovery. Um, and once you've read it, you can decide whether or not you think the state can meet their burden of proof based on those police reports. That's how you become informed. And that's at that point, once you've read those and you voluntarily go up there and enter a plea of guilty, um, you are telling the court that you're informed and that there's sufficient facts. If you don't believe those things to be true, then no, the court cannot accept a guilty plea. Can it be considered <clears throat> that a cause of action is valid if jurisdiction has not been established? Yes. By so, voluntarily admitting a guilty plea, right. if I voluntarily then do that, you are accepting point, jurisdiction. But at this point, there's no jurisdiction that has been established. So here's the catch-22. Mm -hmm. um, you sort of, and I, I think I understand what you want, which is sort mm -hmm. of an option C. In the criminal justice system, there's only option A and option B. Option A is you can test jurisdiction, and by default you can test everything else. Right. You have to contest everything or nothing. That's how it works in the criminal justice system. Right. You can contest jurisdiction, which is fine. People mm -hmm. do that all the time. That equals trial. Right. Or you can accept jurisdiction voluntarily. You have to do it by, by completely voluntary will, right. and then you can enter a guilty plea. Those are really the only two options afforded. And, and it's, they're totally it, up to you. And the judge doesn't want to, she's not trying, she's frustrated because those are the only two options, and her hands are tied because she can't give you legal advice from the bench. She absolutely cannot. Her judicial code of ethics don't allow it. And so she's dancing around what you're, trying to get it because she can't give you that advice. And neither can I. <clears throat> right. Frankly, if, if, um, if Mr. Foster wasn't here right now, I wouldn't probably even be engaging in yeah. this conversation with you at all. Only because Her I work for the state, I can't give you legal advice. Uh, what I can do is well, give you the forms and tell you those are the forms that you have to fill out if you wish to enter a guilty plea. What I can inform you, though, is if you fill those forms out saying you want to enter a guilty plea, you have to voluntarily accept jurisdiction. If you don't want to do that, you can't enter a yeah, guilty plea. If you plea. don't, so as of now, you guys are proceeding without jurisdiction. Well, not me, but <laughs> I know what you're saying. Yeah. Um, uh, jurisdiction is presumptive based on the district attorney's information being filed. The district attorney's office has an ethical obligation not to file charges in the, in with the court that uh, they don't believe uh, to have jurisdiction. If they do. And it's proven that they do, or I mean, if they do file a charge without jurisdiction and it's proven that they do, not only would the charge be dismissed, but theoretically it, um, the district attorney's office could be punished. So uh, 
you can challenge it or not. If you say that you want to challenge it or you want the district attorney to prove it, the judge has no choice but to set the matter for trial. It's, it's trial or voluntary plea. Those are the only two options. Can't jurisdiction, the issue of jurisdiction, be raised at any point in a hearing? No. At, at trial. Hasn't the Supreme, you can have hasn't a, Supreme Court said that, You can that, have a though? pre-trial hearing. You can have a pre-trial hearing, right, which could be set before your actual trial, where you'd have a hearing in front of a judge and get to challenge certain things. Um, but that can't be handled today. Well, I attempted. I, I, I believe that, well, first off, I haven't been arraigned. So as far as I've been concerned, every hearing that I've had has been an arraignment attempt. Um, they have called some hearings pre-trial whatever's I, I don't even know well, what, okay, let me I, I don't believe in this religion okay so what? I don't believe in your guys's religion so I'm, I'm just wondering okay why what, what, what do you why you're dragging me here what do you consider to be an arraignment well that's where I am able to be informed of the cause and nature of the proceedings and then enter a knowing and voluntary plea correct you, Not necessarily. you are allowed to be told what the charges are. The district attorney's office does that by giving you a copy of the information, the charging instrument that they filed, which they would have had to have given you at the last hearing, or one of the, at the, at the first hearing you had, the one where you were given further court dates. Um, it's this one, it looks like this. Yeah, this one here. Is, yeah, and that doesn't, like, if you see that, how, how do you know, what evidence do you have that these are applicable? They don't have to that, give evidence. That's a matter for trial. Yeah. So How it gets that into a, a whole. That's it gets is into is a that not personam jurisdiction? That's or what the is that not sub that's subject matter jurisdiction? No, that is an incorrect application of that term. You, so there's, there's different pleading standards in different states and different jurisdictions. Federal court has a different pleading um, requirement than the state of Oregon does. State of Oregon, all you have to do is put the nature and cause of action. You don't have to list facts specific. So, in the criminal charges. So you're <clears throat> telling me that you can proceed without jurisdiction? I'm telling you they can proceed without presenting evidence. Okay, and if it is determined that they have presented or... If they have the evidence they, in their file. If, if they have attempted to, you know, continue to threaten me by forcing me to come here without evidence of jurisdiction, then what is the recourse? There isn't any because that's not a real thing. What do you mean that's not a real thing? Uh, threatening you to come here without uh, providing evidence of the court is not a real thing. No, that's not what I asked. I said if they are threatening threatening me to come here mm -hmm. without there being evidence establishing jurisdiction, then what is my recourse? To set a uh, hearing to challenge that. And if you're found correct, okay, if you're found to be correct, the, case, the court would have to dismiss the charges. Well, how is the court able to force me to do something if they do not have the authority to do so? Uh, you're getting into a whole, the whole political system and I'm not going to argue with you about it. That just this is how the. Well, I'm simply the, asking a question. I'm I, not arguing. Well, I can't get into that with you. Okay. So, so here's all, here's the most I can tell you again because I can't <clears throat> offer you legal <throat> advice, obviously. But what I can tell you is, if you want to enter your guilty plea today, if you want to enter a guilty plea, this is the paperwork you fill out. Nobody's telling you you do or do not have to fill this right. paperwork out. Here's the paperwork available to you. If you decide you do not wish to enter a guilty plea, that's fine too. Dates have been picked. I'll bring you back the form. So you have to, we have, you know, you can enter a guilty plea or we can have a trial date. The court has selected a trial date. I'll, pro I'll provide you the forms letting you know what the date is. And it's entirely your decision. But this would be an uninformed guilty plea. This, this is point. entirely your decision. That's so the most here, I can tell you. Yeah, I'll show you the very last, the very last paragraph of the, of the plea petition. And again, we're bringing, no, I'm, I'm we're bringing up statutes and, and. I'm not bringing up a statute. Well, I'm, I see it right here. No, this paragraph. The very last paragraph says, I'm signing this plea petition and entering this plea voluntarily, intelligently, and knowingly. If you don't feel that's true, the court won't take your plea. And they'll set a trial date so that you can be informed by having the state prove their case. Those are the, those are the options. I don't want a trial, though. I want to enter a plea. And you really are in a catch-22 because the, court has, the court's hands are bound. They can't do anything different. It's governed by the legislature. You're going to have to take it up with the state congress. Well, then I don't know what... Well, why would I have to take it up with them? They, they so don't, they're not over me. Mr. Estabrook, the most I can tell you is those are the forms that the court will require you to fill out. If you do wish to enter a guilty plea, obviously they're there to read at your leisure. You could take them home if you want to. But in the interim, dates have been selected. I'll bring you back a form for the dates. And, I and don't want dates. I don't, I I don't want to have to come here anymore. I understand that. There's many what, will, people what will happen if I don't show up? 
you have a warrant put out for your arrest, and, and then if the police happen? pick you up, they'll bring they'll put you in custody. And Meaning, so you'll be put in jail. Okay, so what you're telling me is that men in uniform and badges with guns will come and take me and put me in a cage, correct? Uh, in all likelihood, if you do not come to a future court date. Right. Yes. So I'm wondering, how can they do that if there is no jurisdiction to do so? Um, you'd have to challenge it in court and prove that, it, that there's no jurisdiction. Well, I'm I'm attempting to ensure that this court has jurisdiction in order to force me to come here before I am forced to come here and I shouldn't have to prove that they don't have jurisdiction the prosecutor has the burden of proof and I don't know how they can proceed if there is no evidence of jurisdiction and quite frankly I'm a little uncomfortable with these proceedings okay because you are licensed by the plaintiff the judge is paid but what? by the plaintiff oh I see what you're saying okay. I'm licensed by this by the bar association you're licensed by the state of Oregon, right? No, I'm licensed by the state bar association. We're self-governed. We're not state governed. Okay, so you have nothing to do with state of Oregon. Correct. Okay. Mr. Osterbrook, um, we're going to need to step out of the jury room mm -hmm. at this point. Uh, these are for <clears throat> you. Like I said, um, fill them out if you choose or not. If you choose, I mean, read them. Read it. This is what the court will require to enter a guilty plea. In the meantime, I'll get your paperwork, but we need to clear the jury room at this point. I just don't know why I'm being railroaded. So where am I going? Uh, just if you have a seat. In here? Yes. Or you can stay there and read. I can't. Oh. Okay. Well, you can Thank you, Your Honor. Again, Jenna Plank, representing the state, spelled J-E-N-N-A-P-L-A-N-K. We are revisiting the matter from this morning, Your Honor. State versus Robert, Robbie Estabrook, case number 16CR11512. Mr. Estabrook is present, not in custody, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Estabrook asked me for clarification. I had mentioned on the record earlier that he's pro se. Uh, he contests that fact, so I would just represent for the record that he is appearing without counsel today. Uh, if there hasn't been entry of an order on his ability to represent himself, perhaps that ought to be the first thing. Uh, Your Honor, I do have a waiver of counsel um, form in my file. Um, I will show it to Mr. Esbrook first, just so he knows what I'm showing in court. Okay, and this is something which um, I had a motion to strike this document because I didn't wish to give up any of my rights. And I, I, I did not sign that. I wrote my name because that was the only way I was going to be able to get out of jail as far as I understood. Well, uh, if you do not wish to waive counsel, then uh, I'll set this for further proceedings and you can come back with counsel or uh, apply for court-appointed counsel or make a waiver at that time. Do I have the right to assistance of counsel that is not licensed by the plaintiff? I'm sorry. Do I have do I have the right to assistance of counsel that is not licensed by the plaintiff? You have the right to a person to counsel who is admitted to the bar of the state of Oregon. So is that a no? That's what that is. But I, I don't know what you what you're talking about. Is the plaintiff in this matter the state of Oregon? The, the plate of those matters is the state of Oregon, that's true, but you have only the right to be represented by court by someone who has a license issued by the Supreme Court of the state of Oregon. So then the answer is I am not, I don't have the right to assistance of counsel that is not licensed by the state. You do not have the right to assistance of unlicensed counsel, that's true. Okay, and am I presumed innocent of all elements of these charges? until proven guilty at trial. Is that unless or until? Unless and until. And is jurisdiction an element of the charges? It need not be proven. It need not be specifically proven. It does need to be true. But if it's not, if you would challenge jurisdiction, then you need to file a motion challenging jurisdiction, and a court will decide that. May I just have a yes or no to the question? To the court clarification, please, is jurisdiction an element? You have the answer I've given you. 
So I'm not entitled to a responsive answer to relevant clarifications? No. I'm not here to be examined by you. I am, as a courtesy, telling you the information. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, I can't do anything about your lack of understanding. I'm simply attempting to seek clarification as to the cause and nature of these proceedings. I'm not asking questions. I'm just asking if jurisdiction is an element of the charges. And I have told you it is an element that if you wish to challenge jurisdiction, you file a motion to do so. It is not something that has to be proved at each stage of the proceedings without having any appropriate procedure to initiate that question. So it is an element, but it has to be proved only when it is challenged in an appropriate fashion at an appropriate time. I have. On March 29th, I submitted a motion to dismiss, as well as a motion to vacate the involuntary not guilty plea that was entered on the prosecutor's behalf on March 1st. Why don't I, if you're not going to take any action on the waiver, so that I can't accept a change of plea, then what I will simply do is set this down for trial, and you can raise any other issues at that time. This is a trial readiness proceedings. It is not a time in which I try to answer all of the questions you might have. If you wish to be represented by counsel, that seems like a good idea, but that's up to you. If you wish not to be represented by counsel, then you must waive representation. Do I have the right to a fair and meaningful hearing today? I am telling you things. I am not submitting to an interrogation of the questions you wish to answer. Objection. These are not questions. These are clarifications. Great. Okay. We'll set this down for trial. Objection. I do not wish to do a trial. I would like to enter a plea of guilty, and that's my goal. And, Your Honor, for the record, just so everything's on the record, because obviously I cannot offer Mr. Estabrook legal advice, so I wanted to take this opportunity on the record to explain that the State tendered the plea petition paperwork to Mr. Estabrook for him to review on his own and in his own time. At this point in time, given the different issues he has raised to the State, I do not believe he's prepared to enter a plea today. Because of that, the State is requesting call dates of 828 for trial dates of 830. I spoke with Mr. Gibson. He had indicated the earlier dates I've requested were full. 829 for 830. Objection. Point of clarification. I am attempting to enter a plea today and get this matter resolved today. I'm simply seeking clarification on whether or not has the prosecutor submitted evidence establishing jurisdiction, yes or no. Yes. Okay. And? And I have given you several opportunities. I'm not going to waste time. I'm not playing games. This isn't a game. I'm aware of that. You've been given paperwork. You said that you waived, you earlier waived counsel, and now you say you have withdrawn that waiver. I'll respect your withdrawal of your waiver of right to counsel, but that means that I can't accept the plea unless we go through that process first. We're just not, we've run out of time for this kind of gamesmanship, sir. Objection. I'm not attempting to play games. Okay. Apparently that date I selected is also now full. So if Mr. Gibson would just tell me what days would be good, and I'll let you know if they'll work for the State. Earlier the prosecutor told me that she did not know if there was evidence establishing jurisdiction, and I'm just wondering how you are aware of this evidence if the prosecutor is not. What dates do we have? I'm simply asking for clarification on this because you have stated on the record that. Have you noticed that I am the judge and you are the defendant? One and a half. I am not subject to cross-examination at any time you wish about anything you wish. I have answered any legitimate question. We are going to proceed with this process because I have other things on my docket than play foolish games. I'm not attempting to play a foolish game. I'm being threatened and brought here against my will, and I'm attempting to resolve this matter today. I'm not attempting to cross-examine you. Okay. I'm wondering, Ms. Roberts, are you under duress at this moment? Ms. Roberts, are you under duress? 
I believe there is evidence that you may be under duress at this time. 9-1-4-9-6. Mr. Estabrook, does the trial date of 9-6 work for you? I, no trial date works for me. I understand. Okay, we'll set it for trial then. I'm attempting to enter a plea today. I have not been arraigned, and I object to these proceedings going this way. I am not attempting to have a trial. I have motions on the table, and I have clarifications on the table, and you are not addressing them. And I'm wondering, are you acting without prejudice today? And, Your Honor, I'm going to submit for the record, I'm going to show Mr. Estabrook the paperwork, which has been scribbled out a few times, but it indicates a call date of 9-1-4-9-6. Obviously, the parties are not joined. They're requesting these dates. The state is requesting them. Yeah, the state would request a further proceeding date of August 23rd. Okay. And I will state for the record that the judge is non-responsive and is claiming that there is evidence of jurisdiction having been submitted by the prosecutor when she has not even had the opportunity to see evidence. I told you that she doesn't have to prove jurisdiction on evidence every time she appears in this court, and your proceedings is not special for that reason. The process of the court will continue. You've been held in – I see that you've been held in contempt of court before. It can happen again. Is it contemptible to ask for relevant clarifications? It's contemptible to impede the process of the court. We're here for a simple process, which is to set trial dates or take a plea. We are not here to discuss jurisdiction. We're not here to deal with any pending motions you have. That's not the process for which we have proceedings right now. Well, I'm attempting to enter a plea today, and like your boss says – And you are not cooperating with the processes by which we can enter a plea. I have explained to you several times. I'm not – have to do it again. You either have waived counsel, and I can accept a knowing and willing plea, or you have not. You say that you rescinded this waiver of counsel. That means you have not waived counsel. That means that either you come back with counsel or you waive counsel. You can have counsel appointed for you if you cannot afford to buy it – to hire counsel, but you need to apply in that case to the office across the street with – for appointment of counsel. How can I obtain a fair and meaningful hearing if counsel has to be licensed by the plaintiff? I assume that's a rhetorical question. It's not. I have told you what the law is. And I'm also asking how can you adjudicate this matter when you're paid by the plaintiff? Okay. We have done what we need to do today. And, Your Honor, for the record, I'm tendering to Mr. Estabrook a copy of the date selected. Mr. Estabrook has the plea petition paperwork. Should he choose to enter a change of plea to the State, I know he has the e-mail address for several members of our office. So that can still be done before the – for the proceedings date. But for now, Mr. Estabrook has a copy of the court paperwork. Why can't I enter a change of plea? Okay. Why don't I sign it before we do that? Oh. Oh. Yes, you did, Your Honor. She signed it. Well, let me – let me add something to it. I want to reflect on this order that he has said that he has rescinded his waiver of counsel. Objection. I never – I never entered a waiver of counsel in the first place. So how can I – how can I rescind something that I never authorized? Would you please clarify to me how it is that you are saying that I rescinded something that I never authorized? I would like to state for the record that the judge is assuming jurisdiction in this matter using her opinion and not facts and evidence, and that the prosecutor has not shown that she has established jurisdiction in this matter and the court is proceeding without jurisdiction. You can place that on the record. It's on the record. Are you under duress because you get paid by the plaintiff? I'm not under duress, but you now must leave counsel table. We've got other proceedings that will follow. So you're threatening me? Well, I don't – I'm not saying anything other than the fact you do have to leave there. I will tell you what the consequences will be if you do not vacate counsel table now that your proceedings are over. Okay. Do you know what those – what those consequences will be? I do not. I would – I would hold you in contempt of court, and I would ask the sheriff to take you into custody. Okay. Then I will voluntarily leave. Okay. Thank you. 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 Th